डॉक्टर तिवारी होम्योपैथी हैज अ वेरी बैड रेपुटेशन कैन यू टॉक अबाउट इनफैक्ट एनीथिंग अपार्ट फ्रॉम एलोपैथी इज लुक एट विद कैपिटलाइज सो माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो दैट ऑल ऑफ अस आर ऑन द सेम पेज टू बिगिन विद दिस कैन यू एक्सप्लेन द methodology or the concept behind homeopathy and how it sees the whole person not the whole body i think uh, we please tell me if i'm not audible uh, the i think the thing that you start with is that he has a lot of skepticism uh is exactly what i had started with when i started my practice but uh, surprisingly it was the patients that gave me more confidence that you know we are looking for something like this so the general discourse in the media maybe that you know homeopathy is placebo pseudo science or whatever the i mean the discourse is for the patients they are looking for something which is safe which is more effective and i felt very welcomed by them that were itne saal aap kahan the hum dhoond rahe the aisa kuch to bhi so that was very encouraging for me and i think uh, to go into a little detail of it uh, i mean it's a huge topic so i'll be just focusing on some very very important points uh, the focus of homeopathy remains uh understanding of the person it's a very individualized approach it's a it's an approach where we look at a an 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 individual as an individual not as a uh a, a, a small portion of a diagnosis group i mean if a person is experiencing depression or anxiety or hearing voices or whatever Uh, the person is not categorized into say acha ye schizophrenia hai iska treatment aisa aisa hota hai protocol hai acha ye depression hai iska treatment aisa aisa hota hai ye protocol hai it's, it's not that uh, like i think what we just uh, heard in the earlier session uh, with uh, i think snehal ma'am what was her name snehal said yeah. so she talked about the experience of a certain problem she termed it the monkey mind the problem that the person experiences what is the perception of the problem and what is the effect that it has in that particular person like somebody may name it a gorilla somebody may name it an earthquake and whatever and these are the perceptions or the metaphors that they have in their mind and the effect of it is shown in in a very peculiar individualized manner like no two people with depression will have exactly the same experience no two people with anxiety will have the same experience you know everybody will have a palpitation but for somebody it's like you know what i am certain i'm going to die kuch nahi hone wala hai chhod do and they withdraw that's an individualized reaction versus i'm having palpitation do something for me do something for me so now this an individual illness behavior is the uniqueness that we try to understand about each and every particular individual and i think that's where that is what is the basis of prescription of a certain remedy uh again there's a lot of details i'm i'm just jumping onto the most important ones uh not getting into the process of it but as we are able to make a totality of the experience of a person both at the level of mind and at the level of body that becomes the basis of homeopathy treatment that what are we treating in this person it's not the label of depression it's not the label of schizophrenia it's not the label of an anxiety thing uh it's the problem that the person is going through for some it could be a reaction to grief for some it could be reaction to a certain business loss for some it could just be anticipation abhi to kuch hua nahi hai ho jayega to now that's a very individualized uh pattern that that a person shows and coming down to this specifics in each particular case uh so homeopathy has always been a mind body medicine like the major practice of it is in the physical illness uh sector there also the understanding of the mind is a huge part of our understanding because we are not separating ke isko physical symptoms se to khali yahi dekho we also look into the mental state of it at the same time when we are dealing with a person with a mental predominant disturbance the physical counterpart there's a lot of psychosomatic reactions that come up 
we look at hypothyroidism we look at uh, polycystic ovary as as an effect of you know what mental state you've been going through so combining both of this is what uh, we look at that we have to treat this pattern of response that the individual is going through uh now going to the next question that we get very very often is ye medicine kaam kya karti hai sari ek jaisi safed koliyan hoti hain ya drops hote hain ya kuch hote hain so how do they work and you know how can it uh i think the experience is that the manner in which we understand the curative effects of these medicine uh is that one the source of these medicines are natural substances uh natural substance as simple as common salt it can be as dangerous as a snake venom uh these substances are in a very specific method serially diluted we call it potentization because we also understand that it probably enhances the energy of that particular substance like how we talk about subtle energy within us or the vital force or the soul or the energy that you know makes us alive i think each and every substance in universe has its own energy and that energy has a certain experience if you are able to liberate it um the process of potentization uh is where we understand that this energy is liberated and that is what is transformed into the extract that we get of it how do we know the curative effects of it is the medicines are actually when we are so there's a process called drug proving where uh we get to know that suppose if i made a medicine through common salt what are the effects of this medicine the medicine is in a sense tested on healthy human beings who are voluntarily you know coming up so males females young old all of them and when the medicine is given and these are in the minute doses which are uh, not to be found on regular chemical analysis and which becomes a point of criticism that isme to kuch hai hi nahi hai to sara alcohol hai sara pani hai sara sugar hai to kya hai uh and i think that's a big challenge that we as a system have to answer in in, in times to come uh but when these medicines are administered and i have been on homeopathy all my life for for various treatments but also as a student going through this process of drug proving being one of the one of the provers who's consuming this medicinal substance and observing what are the signs and symptoms that come within me and i think anybody who has a uh, doubt over how these medicines work or not i think should participate in a very controlled uh, like you know process of drug proving and realize that these substances have effects and when i as a healthy individual after taking the medicine i experience certain signs and symptoms which includes mental states which includes sleep disturbances it may include appetite changes physical symptoms or anything and everything dreams a lot of change happens within the body and the mind and this is recorded when when we do it in a group of say 100 people all the uh, responses from these 100 people are noted down and eventually compiled into a set of signs and symptoms that this particular medicine is capable of producing uh when we find which a, a, a set of signs and symptoms in a particular patient we match the picture with atha kaun sa wala medicine tha jo ye wala picture deta hai thank and you so much for sorry. explaining in uh, yeah. detail yeah. and uh, keeping time in mind and to more patients sure, 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 sure. the next person dr tenzin um thank you so much for joining us can you tell us um because the western model of mental health care is now beginning to acknowledge the whole biopsychosocial model um how does tibetan medicine look at mental health uh firstly tashi delik tol i don't know how many of you know the meaning of tashi delik but tashi means auspiciousness and then delik means well being so i wish you all auspiciousness and uh well being as i start this uh, panel so uh how many of you know about soarik part tibetan medicine has anyone ever tried no but no okay so uh, i firstly i would give a little introduction about you know like the institute where i belong so i belong to mensi kang men means medicine si means astro science and then kang means institute uh, the reason behind giving this introduction is because when i 
when I speak on uh, medicine, I will be touching a little aspect of uh, astro science also. And another thing is uh, Tibetan medicine, or these days now we are also known as uh, Soa Rigpa, recently added to the Irish system of medicine. So Soa means uh, healing, Rigpa means uh, science. So this is basically the science of healing. Okay, so we are uh, very deeply connected with Buddhism also. So when I speak about mental health from the perspective of Soa Rigpa, so I will be like uh, touching about the concept of mind and body, which is uh, from the uh, Tibetan Buddhist uh, philosophy. So, as per like, I was uh, actually supposed to show you a, a clip, but since there is a change in the room, so we see that mind and body are two different things that have you know like uh, come to meet together in the mother's womb during the conception. So that is why, see, when you know like uh, both the couples are healthy, everything is fine with them. But still, they are not able to conceive. So we say this is because the uh, karmic relation, or you can see the karmic you know, attention between the consciousness or the mind. That is, we call it as Bhartu Nambar Sheba or inter intermediate uh, consciousness. So there is no connection between the parents, or we can say the couple who is uh, making love at the moment. And then there, since there is no connection, so they cannot come together. And then you know, like uh, the conception is not happening. So, in this regard, uh, what we say is that uh, there are certain rituals you can normally do. So, so but when I speak about rituals, please don't think that when medicine is only about you know, like, uh, going superstitious and all this, is nothing like that. So, after the you know, like, uh, mind, mind and you know, like body is formed in the mother's womb, from there it on, uh, the two form such a relation, you know, like they are formed in such an intangible, uh, such an, you know, like entangled in such a way that they are not, not separated. So when we speak about mental health or mind-body concept, we see that the two of them are interdependent. They are entangled in such a way that, you know, they share the bond between uh, this uh, house and, or you can say, a guest house or a, and the guest coming there. So this is the relation. So in one word, we can say that uh, body is the seat of mind. So anything that happens to body that affects the mind and in a similar manner, you know, anything that happens to mind like mental disturbance. So all this affects the body. So when we speak about the root cause of suffering, so this I'm speaking about mental health or any kind of health in Tibetan medicine in Swarikwa. So we say that the root cause of suffering is ignorance. Uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhist philosophy, I can say, not just Tibetan, Buddhist philosophy also says that the root cause of suffering is ignorance. Tibetan astro science also says, you know, the root cause of suffering is ignorance. So in this way, we are all together. Now coming to uh, Tibetan medicine, we say that from ignorance comes out the three mental poisons. The uh, chak shedang timok, which means, you know, the chak means desire attachment. And then shedang uh, means hatred, anger. And then, you know, timok means uh, this enclosed mindedness. And then after that, you know, so this is the level of like the three mental poisons that mainly deals with the mind. Okay. Then after that, what we say is the uh, chak, you know, the desire attachment, this gives rise or this produces low energy, the principal energy, one of the principal energies in the body. And then we say that hatred anger produces tipa, tipa energy in the body. And likewise, you know, uh, the timuk, timuk, which means, you know, the close mindedness, it gives rise to the taken energy in the body. So for an easy understanding, I would say that uh, the three principal energies in Tibetan medicine are lung, tipa and taken, which are very similar to vata, pitta and kapha, for an easy understanding, so that you all don't get confused. Okay, but what we see is uh, Ayurveda and Tibetan medicine or Soarikpa, so we are very uh, familiar on the superficial level, but when we go deeper, then there are certain, you know, dissimilarities also. So this is just to give you an understanding that Lung, Tipa and Pekin, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. And the loose translation was like, Lung was translated as wind energy, Tipa as bile, and then uh, Pekin as this thing, uh, Pekin as uh, flame. So coming back to mental health, so we, as I said, that when you speak about mental health, we just don't say, oh, this is mine, you just have to concentrate on the mind, like uh, doctor said. So our concept is also like, you know, mind, body goes together. So if you just ask me uh, what is mental health and how do we see it, so we say like this is a happy mind or mind free from the three mental poisons and a healthy body, which means, you know, like uh, the three 
principal energies are in a uh, good state or a balanced state. And most importantly, you know, when we talk about mental health or mental disorders in our system of medicine, so we relate it to low energy, the water the water or the wine or the water energy and even if we go more specifically we would say prana or the sozen look or the life sustaining look as i said we are quite uh, senior at the superficial level so in tibetan medicine it's all about like being a tibetan physician or a soar equa physician i can say or a traditional system or any kind of physician i say what we cure is we cure the look imbalance in the body and the relation between look and mind is like that of you know like in earlier uh, in earlier world we used to see it as the relation between a horse and a rider but when we current when speaking in the current human we can see a vehicle a car or even in a bike and a rider so we say the relation the connection that to have you know like if uh, the rider is a little bit in a imbalanced state this or anything like that you know he will not have control over the bike and likewise you know if the bike is like not working or gets punctured or anything like this no fuel or anything like that it cannot so the relation between low energy in the body and then mind is more like the bike and the rider and then the channels in the body through which you know they go they go together we say the, the channels are more like the uh, tracks or the road because if both the things are good but if the road is not very good the bumpy roads even if you have a bullet you know you are going if the roads are bumpy not very good then you can feel the connection so as all the perfectionists as i said it our main focus is on balancing the lung energy that has been disturbed in the body because as i said disturbance in body will disturbance means a disturbance in lung and disturbance in lung means disturbance in the mind and the same vice versa thank okay. you It's quite a lot to digest. Mm -hmm. I will take a time to take this a moment to reflect on this and allow people to digest because one system of medicine and another system of medicine. Um, the idea is first to get everyone talking a little bit about their system and then leave twenty minutes for Q and A. I have a few questions, and when you have, you also please ask. So coming to you, doctor. Uh, I was very fascinated to talk to you, especially because um, I watched a TED talk with uh, Dr. Julia, and she was telling about how nutritional supplements can actually reduce symptoms, not only preventive but reduce the symptoms um, when it comes to symptomatic mental health uh, you know, cases. So. You're an Ayurvedic practitioner. You've been an Ayurvedic practitioner for 22 years, and now you're a nutritional coach. So, how do you see as nutrition and uh, using only nutrients as medicine? If, if that is also something we can do uh, to look at both preventive and symptomatic uh, mental health issues. And please don't mind if I stop you people. It's just to keep everything. No, in I think so. We time. have yeah. running short of time, so I would like to keep it a um, bit short. So I uh, thank you so much, uh, the Red Door, for inviting me on this wonderful panel. I'm so happy to see that you. That there are a lot many people who are coming out of the darkness, spreading the illumination everywhere. So it's very, um, it's kind of a thing which is really appreciable. So first of all, uh, I I am an Ayurvedic doctor, and uh, the concept of the Tibetan medicine and Ayurveda are almost the same. I was just going through since I came to know that she would be on the panel, so I just went through this pathi, uh, 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 and I came to know that it, uh, it is already originated from the Ayurveda. So Atharvida is the prime thing, and then the basic thing is that the Ayurveda is the next thing, and then the other pathi is evolved. So Ayurveda is basically a kind of thing which uh, treats a person made up of five elements. We all are made up of five elements, and all the food, all the things on this earth are made up of five elements. We definitely have a specific prakriti or the bioenergy we are born with. Sometimes you must have seen there are many food or items. Which work for you, and the same person uh, and another person or your sibling will not be happy with that food. So you can see the difference. The food has been cooked in the same way, and uh, the thing is that it's not working for you. It's creating problems with one person, and it is very helpful for the other. Why is it so? It's because you have a unique prakriti or a unique body type. So basically, Ayurveda believes there are three body types: air, fire, and water, as per 
she said so air people they are usually you all must understand what kind of a bioenergy you if i see you i can just make it out what kind of a bioenergy you have so its physical features and its psychological profile also is mentioned so basically along with your physical uh, profile there is another profile which is the psychological profile there are three kinds of profiles sattvic rajasic and tamasic profiles you all are aware with these words so these are all interrelated and the foods are also interrelated because the foods are made up of the same five elements which we are made up of so ayurveda's principle is that if you eat the same content so you are go going to increase that the quantity or the portion of that and you can develop the disorders which are happening because of the exaggeration of that humor or that prakriti or that dosha so ayurveda has a huge uh, vast definition it believes that you should have some agni some dhatu some mal some mal kriya your excretion should also be very good and on the top of that prasanna atma indriya bala that is first it is abhidhiyate so a person is considered healthy if he has all these features not just physically physical health so um having the food groups which balance these doshas will definitely help you have a healthy and sound body as well as sound mind so um coming on to these uh, the questions mr doctor sneha asked that uh, how supplements can help supplements are basically superfoods or supplements these are kind of things because right now the situation right now we are in a modern era the life is so hectic it's taking a toll on our all of us our health is suffering our emotional well being is suffering we are not able to take care of ourselves we don't give get our uh, get the time to rest and to relax so there are food supplements which definitely help you calm your senses and to which help you have all these neurotransmitters these there is a lot of science uh, i think the due to shortage of time i cannot touch so many topics at a time but there are definitely food and supplements which will de definitely um, calm your senses and uh, uh, in the ayurveda if a person is having vatic personality or a vat disorder he can have the complications or the mental disorders like he can be he can have social anxiety he can have fears and he can um, uh the he can talk insensibly or he can have auditory hallucinations these are the things which a vata person can have a fire personality or a pitta person can have anger jealousy frustration these are the things he will be prominent or he will be more prone to and a person who is having the kapha predominance or the person who is having water and earth element as the predominant so he can go into deeper and darker uh, depressions and he can be stubborn he can be uh, very sad these are the things which the people are prone to same way is go for the physical elements also we are prone to those disorders which are prakritis predominant if we don't take that kind of food or the supplement so we must be taking care what kind of a food we are eating we must understand your uh, we must understand our body type and eat accordingly so that we don't aggravate that kind of a feature in our cells thank you so much thank you thank you um i have two questions can i add one point please yeah yeah uh because uh, firstly what i would like to say is regarding the fact <coughs> being ayurveda as she said uh here i have to object a bit because see, uh, according to our own history of tibetan medicine so what we see is like uh some 2500 years ago in tibet there was uh, the first international conference on medicine in which the scholars from all the nearby countries like india persia greece so many were invited and there our own uh, physician also like representative of tibet also uh, participated so what we see is the text we study fundamental uh, text of uh, this tibetan medicine we call it as yushi the four tantras so we say that tibetan medicine is mainly you know like we have taken all the essence of all other systems of medicine in addition to the like uh, knowledge we already had so like uh, I'll show you. Like, so we have been organizing conferences, you know, like inviting speakers from all the eye systems of medicine. So I'm going to give to the Red Jaw team. 
uh, after this, you know. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, so there are all these, uh, so when we come across some Siddha, speak, uh, Siddha uh, like doctors, they say like, oh, Chinese medicine is very much like Siddha. So likewise, you know, so right, yes. So what I'm saying is, this is not exactly Ayurveda, but you know, like, uh, all from all systems of medicine, yes, so evolution Ayurveda, is always so like, there. Yes, evolution yes. is always yes. there. So we are, you know, like, we have taken everything, like, essence. all the good essence. So you cannot just say that, you know. <laughs> so everyone feels a resonance. Yes, <laughs> 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 because the best yes, has yes, been yes. 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 I have two questions. Um, I'm a palliative physician, so I studied MBBS, allopathy, and... Uh, I, in fact, was wanting to take up psychiatry. Ultimately, I found palliative medicine that looks at total pain. So, with, for physical pain, we dispense morphine uh, and fentanyl. For mental emotional pain, we, we do counseling and therapy. For social pain, like uh, usually palliative care deals with chronic illness and long term, uh, like end of life care. So, the social pain, loss of job, loss of position in the family, who am I? and the spiritual pain of who am I and why it happened to me. Uh, so that's what I look at. And I found in allopathy, I was surprised in fact that in allopathy there is a system called palliative care which, which still looks at a person as a being. And like um, Dr. Tiwari was saying that it's not pathology center, uh, person center. It's like Lakshmi has breast cancer, Sneha has breast cancer, but the approach, the goal of care and the treatment plan would be very different. It's a newer field in India. Uh, Mike, I just wanted to introduce where I'm coming from also and uh, ask two questions or probably even one if uh, all of us speak and please all of us uh, feel free to speak because I see it in my practice a lot. Uh, people who are at the end stage of cancer come to us because it's a new system. People don't refer earlier on. So after they come to us and chemo is really hard, right? Sometimes the body can't take it. So then they start looking for alternative uh, treatments to do and sometimes it just clicks for people like Ayurveda works or uh, homeopathy works and sometimes they move from one system of medicine to another to another all in already the time that is really less. So my question is for my patients that there are, it's like a buffet so many systems are available how does one know where to go or when to shift like when it's not working, when to... You know, that's a question that palliative care physicians we do. When to say stop and, you know, shift. Um, yeah. I think it's a... It's a difficult question to answer because one can never know all. Uh, a lot has to be gone by the intuition. I think that's one of the most important things because... Uh, like I said, you, you can never know all. But having said that, I think it is good to have discourses like this where we are oriented about many uh, alternatives available. And with that knowledge, I think we are better equipped ki acha bhi ye stage hai, toh, you know, ye shayad nahi aapko kaam karega kiki iska jo bhi process of, you know, you have to go through, maybe as of now you don't have the energy for it. So maybe another would be better suitable. And, and I think it will vary individualistically. But I, for me, I do refer people to other ones. Uh, I go by my gut. I'm like, Mujhe aisa lag hai. and in all good faith, this is what I would want to do. And I found excellent result. I even actually uh, refer to fellow homeopaths. Hmm. That mere se nahi ho raha hai. it's not probably the uh, right. limitation actually, of the actually, science. Yeah, bilkul, uh, right approach. Yeah. Actually, we should work in a team for the well-being of the patient, <coughs> not just for our, our, system. our system or about about your financial thing that the person is coming, you'll be getting the consultation. It's not about Because if you refer someone to a good doctor, to someone who can help the person more, the uh, patient would definitely be a, uh, thankful to you in the long run. The patient would always look up to you as a guide or a mentor would definitely come back instead of lingering on to the uh, things which are not able to. I don't think so. That's a good idea. Always keep your, we should be working in a team if the thing, if a person is having some issues and we know that allopathy, allopathy can definitely help the person. I definitely would refer you, please go get the test and get, go visit a doctor first 
and whatever we can help you at the nutrition level and the uh, diet level and the ayurveda level we will do that but first get yourself tested and get the approval of your doctor so that we can do two things together that's okay. the basic approach that should be the i think basic approach for persons with the so for, from our system of you know, or i can also say from our tibetan community how to, how it functions you know so basically in soari per we say that diseases you know like diseases are of four kinds first is like minor transient diseases this i need to mm. <laughs> speak a bit, bit on this so, so that you know like i can also this now we do so minor uh, my so sorry <laughs> so my, minor disorders are those that like actually don't need any you know like treatment or any medical intervention like like for instance you know like i was supposed to speak here so i had this little stress about my mind you know and then all this changes program and all these things you know so as soon as this panel is over that's gone so for is this is the first thing and then the second thing is we say uh, we call it as shewang wale which means you know diseases that are influenced or that are results of past karmic actions so we say like they are you know like mostly like 19 99% they are not treated of us and then we talk about untap dene which is like diseases which are you know like influenced by uh, earlier we used to translate it as uh, evil spirit influences and then after his holiness you know, like i don't know how many of you know, like uh, listen to his holiness the dalai lama's teaching but he said like uh, those spirits are, are not evil i mean like until and unless you do harm to them they don't do any like they don't cause you any harm so we say it like contact uh, dune and after that is uh, say the like this of this lifetime so what i'm trying to say is if the said disease falls under you know like uh, those of uh, negative influences from the past life or the like uh, spirit influences or spirit influences so what we normally say is we take the uh, this thing uh, suggestion of astro science astro science because in our community what we do is like in case of cancer or any kind of disorders if a certain medicine is not helping you so what we say is just go and consult an astro Uh, they will do the like health uh, chart, health chart or any kind of chart, and then also you know in our system of medicine, like those lay people, what they do is uh, they just collect the names of doctors, like if they are to see Tibetan doctors, so they just uh, get the names of senior doctors or any doctor they feel like they have like some connection, and then they go for the divination, and then according to that you know whichever doctor suits you, you just go and consult them, and also in our uh, like sorry when we say that soja soje sonam lake gel. which means you know there is a karmic connection between the like doctor and the patient so as you said instinct that is also very important so one thing is that like, in any kind of treatment the main for me at least you know like <laughs> i believe that the doctor plays a very major role and until and unless you know look, you uh, you cannot feel or you don't build a uh, connection with your doctor or the trust in your doctor the medicine is not going to work even if the medicine buddha or like, like yeah, any kind right. of you know <laughs> comes and help you isn't it right yeah. definitely and yes uh, to add one more point to this <laughs> <laughs> as she said no like doctors like the patients come to alternative actually to be honest no i don't like like this what alternative medicine because there have been cases in which our systems of medicine like i'm not saying to get medicine all the traditional like systems of medicine have been helping a lot and then the allopathic system of medicine is the alternate one so in that regard suppose our senior doctors when they uh, like treat cancer patients they also say like if you are having like uh, any kind of like chemo please go for it and also like in our case also i uh, we tell our patients like if there is very you know like severe pain this go for uh, pain killer but only when needed because see uh, i mean, like, i hope nobody is from allopathy medicine so <laughs> 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 don't get me wrong but you know uh, what we have observed is that uh, in take of too much of allopathic medicine that causes uh, problem with first thing digestion stomach and then kidney Mm, definitely yeah. that's a proven thing <laughs> yeah no no it's a proven thing i think somewhere in this clash of systems yeah. we forget that uh, the person is in question and yes. we are not like stakeholders of system that's why yes. it's very difficult for allopathic practitioners to even say that it's okay you, you know yes. you can take our medicines and you still you can go to someone else you know they um, make it as a pseudo science which i think any system shouldn't do 
to each other. I think when you have an injury, when you have a broken bone, you need a surgeon, you need adequate. Yes. And when you have chronic conditions, you need a complementary system, yes. not all <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think we've we should we have gone past the time where we are bickering and fighting yes. because what is the actually worst? The patient's actually the patient yes. is the prime person. So normally, you know, we tell our patients that if you are on allopathic medicine, mm-hmm. like among our friends, when we say like, then please make sure to take you know like our pills or any kind of traditional pills that you know is good for your digestion. Yes. Mm-hmm. We say digestive heat, digestive fire, because we say that indigestion is the root cause of all exact disorders. So our true focus, you know, so when we take medicine, our prime focus is the digestion and then digestive heat, agony, nature. Yes, but currently on the studies. In the modern concept, are on the same. I think your next question is that. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm in search of a holistic practice. And um, that's the reason, you know, in palliative care, in uh, somatic psychotherapy. And uh, my first job was in a uh, monastery as a physician, but for the monks and nuns. So my life has taken this turn and I am in this journey. Um, Let me check the time before I ask you the next question. We have 10 minutes. Does anybody have a question that they would like to ask uh, the panelist? Yeah. I would actually like to ask about research and research within these uh, systems. Um, I am studying expressive uncertainty, which is also quote unquote alternative to drug therapy and the mainstream therapies. So there is always this um, sense of needing to enter the mainstream and a sense of like establishing uh, who we are and what we're bringing and what does this stand for. So I actually want to um, understand from the, from all three of you what it means to conduct good research in areas of limited medicine and we know and value to care. Okay. okay. So basically you are asking about the research because right now people have become they don't want to rely on uh, the faith or something. They really want all the evidence. So, research is very important. You should have a complete data that's lacking in our basic R systems, which is not there in the allopathy. So, this is the thing we are lacking. That's why people are considering it alternative. All the results, and if we go into this detail and we see the results, we have many more case studies and many more results which are more positive and which are not published. That is the reason people are having a bit of apprehension in uh, joining these uh, FPs. That's the then there is the need of research and it is definitely lacking. I really admit that. I mean, isn't that the methodologies that exist in the mainstream don't suit these systems and there is another way of conducting research that is more suitable? Um, or is it that there isn't enough data or enough research scientists? So data definitely is lacking, but actually the, uh, the persons who are practicing they usually don't give that much importance because in Ayurveda or I, I, I talk about Ayurveda only. So because in our system, this thing is lacking because we don't keep the data of the person. And uh, there is some kind of a secretive thing also. They don't want to publish the things that they are having some kind of uh, medicines. They don't want to give it to the next generation if the person is not from their own family. I have definitely seen these kind of things. So they don't want to uh, reveal their secret. So that is the reason they are lacking. They don't want to tell their secrets. So they, so basically, they are not doing the research and this thing. But right now, it's not the thing. Right now, the people are definitely with the next generation. I keep a track of all my patients, all the uh, their medical history, their family history, their dietary history. Everything I keep a record of these things. So in case we want to take uh, do some research, we can definitely see the things. See what is happening? Why is it happening? So if I see a person who is having a PCOD or a girl who is having some health issues, I can see that the family is having the history of uh, diabetes. That's why and she is having these uh, dietary issues That's and uh, this is her lifestyle difference. That's why the reason she is having. So it's very good to keep the record uh, and research. So definitely the people will definitely get more, have more faith in our system. So research is a must. I'd like to add on what you said only. That art, we think science, uh, and I would look at it as a 
colonization of the mind. You know, we have been colonized even mentally that only Western science is science. Um, one is, in, I'd like to bring about research specifically. Not all types of research get funding. So, you know, when we don't have data, that also means that there's no funding, even in allopathic medicine. You see, the drugs are tra tested only on male rats, male bodies. So, the same drugs are given to women also, as if they're thought of as a smaller man in terms of BMI. So, no, uh, women, research for women and queer people, queer bodies are very less. Then, so, funding is an issue. And like you said, even methodology uh, might be an issue. And third one, like, you know, in methodology, we look at, even now, it's a known fact. Qualitative research is understood like less than quantitative, like less scientific. So then, uh, then third, I think in my case also, it comes as ethics of research. So in my uh, field, which is the alternative of the allopathic medicine field, palliative medicine, um, ethical issue is that when a person has very little time left, can you use them as research subject? And... Second, are they consent comes only when there is no form of power dynamic between this, and here already there is a power dynamic. That person is your patient and has a limited time and kind of dependent. So in this, like in my field, if I talk, um, these are things lacking, uh, and that's why sometimes when they say data is not there, then we have to see why data is not there. Probably look at from look and. You know, in, in that context. Did you want to add anything? Sure. So, uh, as for our institute, we have a separate department that is called research research and development department that does all the research works. So, uh, I think uh, they have done two researches, and that has that has proved that treatment medicine is very helpful in, in treatment of uh, diabetes and I think cancer also. And they also have ongoing projects. So if you like, you can uh, check on our website and then we'll get more detailed about it. Also, you know, like Tibetan medicine being uh, effective for cancer, this is a very like uh, common and popular thing. That's why, you know, Dr. Ishi Tandil have got the Padma Shri Award. Yeah, two years one more question. Uh, yes. Uh, so I wanted to ask, uh, like in homeopathy, uh, even I am from homeopathy faculty. Uh, so we have individualized approach for each and every patient. So the medicine differs for the same condition, different medicine will be administered. So how do the other system or how do you administer or it's also go to a generalized manner like for depression this medicine will go or how is it like I understood the uh, classification of your diseases like uh, how it comes so I wanted to so for that you know, first I would say that uh, whenever a patient comes to see a tibet doctor so as soon as you enter the cha uh, chamber from there on, you know, the doctor is observing you. Yeah. From there, you know, the doctor gets an idea of your like nature, what personality, or what constitution, what which is. So after that, you know, when you speak to the doctor, because you know, we say that mental health is mainly you know like related with lung energy, water energy. But you know, you can see like in uh, mental health cases, there are some who are very violent, some very aggressive. So we say that. We, we do have loom in the background, but you know, that is mostly, you know, like uh, related with tipa, tipa and loom, like tip and uh, water. Right. And then, you know, like there are some people, like in case of depression, some are like, they don't talk to anybody, like they are just, you know, open in their own world. That is like, we say this is more like hegel and uh, loom, that is, yeah, tipa and uh, water. So accordingly, we prescribe medicine. And then, as I said, you know, when we prescribe medicine, the prime focus is on the digestive heat. And then the uh, uh, and then the, you know like lung uh, lung disturbance and then the main you know energy which is most disturbed in the body. So this way, so there's nothing like if you come to me, I'll give you the same medicine. Nothing like that. It's important to see like body and the nature of the patient. I want it. And when we look at palliative care, do we have a set of protocol? Like, uh, WHO level is there and pain score more than six requires opioids. Um, but we have a process called goal of care meeting. 
So after there is a life threatening diagnosis or a long term disease diagnosis, the doctor sits down with the patient and the family. <coughs> and here our focus is uh, what were their coping mechanisms before, how to take cope in situations like this, what are their capacity, bodily capacity, and then what are their aspirations. My bodily capacity is that maybe that I can just walk with a crutch. My aspiration will be that I need, you know, I would like to walk on my own one day. And then the plan treatment is made with all three of us, like the patient, the family and the doctor sitting. Uh, I would say doctor means doctor and healthcare team. So there will be physiotherapist, and psychologist, and therapist. And so then the goal of the plan is made. So that depends on not much like the constitution because allopathy somewhere believes that we have a Newton, yes. Newton mechanic model that all bodies are similar um, but we look at it in this case how it's individualized is that person's aspiration capacity desires and then uh, treatment plan. if my desire is to be with my family then um, ventilator might not be an option for me so I would use uh, to stay at home and pass away at home that is the way we approach uh, individualized care we are nearing the end of time. Um, so maybe I can ask a question. <laughs> of course, I've always given away. <laughs> so, ma'am, uh, but we'll take only five minutes. Uh, okay. So I am a research scholar myself, but not in the uh, medical sciences, but in the management sciences. So I have a basic question to the panel. That since, ma'am, you both have mentioned that uh, most of the diseases are concerned with the pain digestion part. So what in this present world we are experiencing is that whatever we are eating is actually filled with a lot of fertilizers and all sorts of chemicals. So how to beat that? So are there uh, discoveries and inventions in the medical sciences going on that can tackle it? Especially, in the, I want to specifically uh, know this. Uh, want this answer from you, ma'am, because you have uh, a doctorate in the uh, uh, what do you call dietitian part of the of the system. So that is my question. And then. Uh, Putting an add-on, does a mental health uh, adds on to the problem, to the disease? Does a mental health play a role other than the food? Definitely. Um, actually, it is uh, the role of mind and uh, food is really a kind of thing which is, uh, it's, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of studies going on and definitely it is there. Ayurveda has uh, its roots 5000 years back and it, it told it that way only in the past and since ages that you are what you eat. So if you are eating food which is helpful for you, you will be a happy person and in case you have and it is vice versa also. If you are not, uh, if your mind is not swirls, so your tongue won't be swirls. So gun and man, they go hand in hand. So as per, uh, sorry, I, uh, he is my actual patient. So my question is that, so because if a person is under stress, your body will release negative hormones. So it will try to combat those, uh, uh, whenever there is a stress, the body is trying to combat. Okay. Either it will have a fight, mechanism or a flight. So both ways it needs to conserve the energy. So it tries to store and that's the reason it is uh, it tries to store the food. So uh, because he is asking about the mental health and weight issues that's the reason he's asking this question. So I'm just answering him. So that is the reason ki your body doesn't want to lose weight or your body is not happy because it's under stress. So stress is definitely a big factor in all kind of mental disorders and all kind of physical disorders also and if you are physically happy you can endure anything it is like you have good endurance uh, and you are eating a good food which is your body is uh, uh, happy with that food so it is called the tushti or uh, you have a good uja or the, you have good strength definitely you can fight uh, you have a good endurance and you can fight the stress which is coming on so it's kind of a thing if you have a good uh, digestion and digestion you can definitely improve with all there are different herbs which you can have according to your bioenergy and according to your imbalance. First of all, you will have to understand what kind of an imbalance it is. It's not like everybody can have giloe, everybody can have a sugar, right? It's not that. So one thing might be pith aggravating, one thing might be pith diminishing. So you have to understand what it, you have to uh, first understand what is the problem. So then it can definitely help you. So that is the way uh, Agni works. And then uh, there are definitely in Ayurveda, we have Panchakarma therapy. That is 
detoxing your body. So there are many procedures and you can go for a detoxification of your body and then uh, there is a sensation come post the panchkarma that you eat a uh, typical kind of a food which is mentioned in that uh, therapy and then your digestion kindles which is like kindling your fire slowly. So it is not that you just put on everything and diminish whatever little fire you have. So you have to kindle your fire slow. Thank you so much. It was a good discussion for me especially because going in depth from three different system learning and then also <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am i am sorry maybe we can take this conversation offline because i have a session at 8 and i need to leave now and uh, thank you so much for being such a brilliant audience and really engaging with the panel thank, thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.